Hello everyone and welcome back for lecture three of material and energy balances. So in this part, we're going to be talking about scaling up and assuming a basis. Now for the first part where we're talking about scaling up, I'm actually gonna build off of our material balance example from lecture two. So this example was where we had benzene and toluene and we were separating it into a distillate stream where we had the majority of benzene and a bottom stream with the majority of toluene. And for this example, we had solved for all the mass flow rates of benzene and toluene in every single one of our streams. We also figured out what our mass compositions were, where I've included those on our slide. And now the question that can arise is, well, I know what these mass flow rates are right now, but I would like a unit that has higher flow rates. What do I do about that? How do I know what flow rates I should be having coming in and out of my system? Okay, and so we're gonna take this example and we're gonna use this for our scale up uh, example. So for us, let's suppose that we want the distillate stream to have a flow rate of 16,000 kilograms per hour instead of 475 kilograms per hour. We could scale up the rates, either the mass or the molar flow rates in order to do this. I will say though, you have to watch out. You cannot scale up mass or mole fractions. And that does not work because as you know, there's a limit. You only have a total mass fraction of one and you can't just create more of something and less of something. So for scaling up, we can use mass or molar flow rates. We cannot use mass or molar fractions. Please remember that. So for us with our scale up, we're going to say that our scale up is going to equal our desired flow rate divided by our actual flow rate. So for this example, we want a distillate stream, so that would be stream two with the majority of benzene, we want that to have a flow rate of 16,000 kilograms per hour. So our desired flow rate is 16,000, our actual flow rate is 475 kilograms per hour. So if we substitute those values in, we will see that our scale up factor is going to be 33.68. Now that, now that we have our scale up factor, what we can do is we can multiply all the flow rates by the scale up factor to achieve our desired flow rates and, or to achieve our desired distillate flow rate. So let's start with our, our stream one, which is our feed stream. We knew that it's a, it has a total flow rate of a thousand kilograms per hour. And now we're going to multiply by our scale up factor of 33.68. And from there, we're gonna have a new total molar flow rate for our feed stream of 33,680 kilograms per hour. And now we can apply that same concept to stream three, our bottom stream. And what we see is that in that case, we'll have 17,682 kilograms per hour. Great. Now, another question that we're going to enter as we continue to do these material balances is what happens when we have zero degrees of freedom, but we're not given a flow rate. And let me show you an example of that. So here, what I've got is I've got, again, three streams. I have one feed stream of nitrogen and oxygen. In this case, it would be an air feed stream. And then I have stream two, which we'll call like our distillate stream, and stream three, which would be our bottom stream, which is just pure nitrogen. And in this case, if we do a degree of freedom analysis on our unit, what we'll see is that for our independent stream variables, we have five, right? Because we have two in stream one, two in stream two, and one in stream three. And then afterwards, if we look at the items that we know, we know that we have a, we have a molar fraction in stream one and a molar fraction in stream two, right? And remember, I can't use both molar fractions in stream one and two to increase my knowns from two to four because that second mole fraction is a redundancy. I already knew that beforehand, or I could have figured it out because I would have done one minus, for example, in stream one, I would have done one minus 0.79 to get 0.21 for the mole fraction of oxygen. So just remember, we only have two knowns. Okay. Now, in order to reduce our degrees of freedom further, what we can do is we can apply some material balances. And in this case, because we have two components, we, have, we can do two independent material balances. And now, we still have one more piece of information that we can use. And that's right by stream three, where I gave you a process specification. I gave you a relationship between stream three and stream one's flow rates. 
And because I have that process specification, I now have one, I am able to reduce my degrees of freedom by another value of one. Now I have zero degrees of freedom, but I also don't have any flow rates. Huh. So what do I do in that case? Ah, so that's where we're going to do something called assuming a basis, which is what we had been doing for our average molecular weight. And it's a similar idea here, where if we have no given flow rates in our problem statement, we're going to choose an arbitrary flow rate as our basis to perform our calculations. And as same deal for our average molecular weights, what we're going to do here is we're going to use 100 or 1,000, most likely. Those are good numbers to use. Just because they're convenient, keeps everything nice and simple. And we're going to use that to help us with all the calculations. And just keep in mind, though, that when you assume a basis flow rate, you can only apply that to one stream. You cannot apply to every single stream and just pick a basis of 1,000 for streams 1, 2, and 3. Doesn't work like that. You pick one, and then you build off of that one stream's flow rate. Got it? Excellent. Okay, great. So that's going to wrap up this part of our lecture three. So just a recap, we talked about what you do for scaling up. And we also talked about situations in which you're going to have to assume a basis. Now, thanks a lot for tuning in and stay tuned for part two.